Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Hamel, the Tier 6 German SPG. This one's located on the north spawn of Ghost Town and it's under the command of Major MTP Cat 6 of the WCSA clan. Now, I was told what this actually was. Um, somebody will have to refresh me though. I think it was um, West Canyons serial arsonists or something like that but they will tell me who it is okay well we've got a 15 centimeter howitzer mounted on top of a hull that was basically a combination of a panzer 4 and a panzer 3 so it was actually a unique design based on those two craft and they actually carry the 15 centimeter howitzer rather well he's capable of doing 600 alpha 39 millimeter pen 6.7 meters burst radius and he's using the top gun not the stock gun which of course is the same howitzer that's on the gorilla it's the top gun which has a much longer range but a much flatter trajectory which means that uh, some targets it has more difficulty trying to hit but it can hit the entire map now it looks like he's having a lot of difficulty trying to get a resolution on the targets which is why he's um, moving about quite a lot. He's looking at the other end of the map. And in fact, I think he's looking off the map, which is why he wasn't able to get a, a solid uh, solution. Okay, that's better. I think he's now looking in the general area. Okay, there's a couple of enemy tanks or three enemy tanks over on the west side of the map at the moment. Cromwell Thunderbolt and a Hellcat. But he's looking for a counter battery, I think. He's looking for the tracer from the enemy RT. Okay, he's having a quick look. There might be a um, a tank destroyer in there. He's decided to fire one in. We'd have to wait until the end of the game to see if there was somebody up there. But there normally is a tank destroyer up that high. Now, over on the west side of the map, we can see that uh, that um, is it Cromwell. It is a Cromwell. Yep. Which, as everyone knows, is a, was a medium tank, but it was actually more of a reconnaissance type light tank. But, well, I suppose you could call it a medium tank at a pinch. They were trying or thinking about putting a 17 pounder into the Cromwell. They realized they just didn't have enough room, which is why they had to make a separate vehicle, which had a different turret, because the, the 17 pounder was just way too long. And the gun that it actually did have, the Cromwell, wasn't able to uh, do. A lot of damage it certainly wasn't able to take down something as big as a tiger so if a Cromwell did find a tiger they had to run like hell but I've heard stories of uh, Cromwells who um, came across tigers <laughs> yeah they certainly scarpered they would certainly camouflage their tank very very well because they didn't want somebody to discover them whilst they were actually having a quick brew up um, of tea and also having some food Okay, that was a little un, a little early. He didn't dial in. He's looking around for targets at the moment. The reload time by the book, if I remember correctly, 29.82 seconds. And Major MTP has got 26. So he has knocked a few seconds off, but not a huge amount. The reload is faster on the Gorilla gun, the stock gun much faster actually and you get more rounds of ammunition to play with but you do less damage so it works out even in the end the um the dpm on the top gun is actually 1207 but on the stock gun it's only 1137 so you can see the the faster reload does help but obviously the top gun does more damage now let it settle oh the hellcat just went down chasing the bz instead of dialing in at the specific point but that looks good because he's now re almost ready to shoot when the guy stops he's ready to shoot himself he's stopping and aim oh don't follow don't chase him just aim ahead of his path no that one's gonna miss you had it right for a second you should always try and dial in ahead of the point that they're going to go to to shoot at your teammates and by dialing in at that specific point, when they drive through that point, then obviously you can let the shell loose and it normally will hit them smack on. 
I know a lot of players will chase a target, and I'm guilty of doing it myself, so I'm not the only one. But look at this. You see, that's perfect, because he, he got the kill. Now, yes, he did splash the T29. That's okay, because, of course, no team damage. But his teammate did go down because he got stunned anyway. But he did get the kill. So he's on the scoreboard as having a kill, and he's got some hit points. Of course, he may have more hit points if there was an enemy up on the top. And it might be that that was one of them. That's a Cromwell. Okay, he's dialed in. Rounds out. Looks good. Could be a kill shot. It is! The shell veered to the left, but he got a splash kill out of it. So that's two kills now. Oh, he's found another one. Thunderbolt. He's actually behind the ship. Rather, he didn't actually find the Thunderbolt. I think the Crusader or one of the tanks that's down in that area actually found the target. But he's looking in that general direction at the moment. He's trying to see from an overhead view if he can land a shell just behind. Always a good idea. Check overhead as well just to see where the shell's being placed. Rounds out. If the guy was close to the edge, then he's obviously going to take a splash from that shot. Now, very difficult to hit the enemy tanks in the town. Obviously, all the buildings get in the way. There's a Striv M4257. And, oh, look at that one. The cheeky little Panther 2 just managed to get around that corner. But he's using the buildings for cover. So he's obviously well aware that when he can't get hit by RT. And you see, that shell hit the building because the the um, the howitzer fly trajectory is very, very flat for the top gun. So he wasn't able to get it over the top of the building. Oh, there is a tank destroyer up there, and he is missing some hit points. I believe that's a Nazhorn. Okay. Rounds out. Knocks the tree down. Well, that was interesting, because there was a Nazhorn up there. The question is, did he actually get damaged by... Major MTT shot earlier in the game. It could be. Okay, we can, that's that Striv M4257, the autoloader premium. Roundabout. Rounds out. <laughs> yep. Oh, he did stun him. And he may have splashed him as well because he's missing some hit points. Okay, so. Can we get another round? Work out where he's going. Lining the shot up. Okay, he's probably going to go back to the bush again, but he's hovering around that spot at the moment. Rounds out straight away. Oh, direct hit! Yes, watching that shell go in, we know that he got a direct hit. There was no notification down below, but we know that he definitely hit him. Got a bang on target. And with the... Uh, with the alpha of this gun, he must have done a lot of damage because the Striv 4257 is basically um, a Striv 42 tank with the, the uh, 57 millimeter turret, the FL11 turret or FL10 turret, actually. So it's very lightly armored. And he just got another direct hit there. This is looking very good, actually, because he's not just got two kills. He's got a number of shots where potentially he's ended up with blind damage on the enemy. And we'll have to see what actually happens at the end, because more than likely there's going to be a few tanks listed there that we didn't see him actually attack. So those were probably the blind ones. Strip M42 has gone into the town, so he's very low on hit points. Only 40. That should be it. Rounds out. Yep, splashed him to death. He's got him. So if it's showing anything more than 40, then obviously that was the splash or the actual damage. Because remember, he did get a direct hit. And 40 hit points is not a lot that he was left with. So I suspect that previous shot did considerable damage to that guy. Okay, here we go again. This could be another kill. Rounds out. Yes! Yes! It's another one. Four kills now. Oh, he's picking them off. Okay. Nice work. 
There's only six enemies left. Two of those are light tanks, two tank destroyers, one RT and a medium. Okay, well, we found one of the light tanks. It's a Type 64 and it looks like he just ran into the edge of the map. Now, it's normally a sign somebody doesn't have their uh, map showing, so you can't actually see the wall. I don't usually do it for the replays. It actually expands the view of the map, so you actually get a bigger map, so to speak, if you don't show the border. They're right up against the border. He's only got one round of standard HE with stun left, but he's going to make the best of it here, and it's the Thunderbolt. Rounds out. Direct hit right on the money, and he gets stun assist straight away. Oh, and it's a kill, so yes. Not bad at all. Okay, that 64 is still being a bit of a nuisance. So our type 64 is trying to fend him off. So, yes, any help we could apply. And we have been spotted. There is an enemy RT in play, remember. He's not moving his position. Now, the enemy type 64 is still up there. He's going, he's scrolling his view out. The guy did get tracked. We'll try and line up a shot. And enemy RT fire. Oh. I heard the rumble in the distance. And we now know where the enemy RT is. He is in the traditional position um, on the uh, east side of the map, just, just to the uh, east of the path. So, uh, yes, yeah, unfortunate about that, but there's not a lot he could do. He's but virtually permanently spotted by that Type 64 because he's got such a long view range. And uh, we were trying to get a shot. And I think partially the reason why Major MTP couldn't get a shot was down to the fact that his gun was pointing down and it kind of reduced his range, which made his reticule appear kind of unusual. But uh, yes, it's unfortunate that, about that. The best thing you can do under the circumstances normally is drive into the gap because that makes it a little more difficult for the type to see you. And of course, it means he has to get closer. And that's when you can normally shotgun him at close range uh, because he gets too close and you can apply the full power of that big howitzer. Okay, we switch to the VK-302M, who's um, located on this side of the town. I think he's kind of waiting for the Type 64 to come back. Meanwhile, our guys are looking for the enemy RT and the enemy light tank because they've got two light tanks we know where one of them is he's up our end this centurion's about to find the enemy RT it happens to be an AMX 13 F3 AM oh he's been spotted and there he is in fact it's not the um, AMX 13 it's the other light tank on the enemy team it's the AMX 12 ton and he just find his 75 millimeter. Now he's going to find it difficult. And there's the RT. Now that's the problem because yes, he can get a hit. In fact, he didn't go for us. I, or did he? No, he did go for us, but the shell overshot. Now this tank does have superb turret armor, but the hull's a bit weak. And I think he's going to try and approach and use his gun depression. The enemy Type 64 has come back and he's paid for it. He shouldn't have done that. Should have stayed up the other end. And the VK's now come down this end to try and trap those guys in place. Okay, here comes the VK. There's the Type T, um, or it's a T3485M. Going back to the Centurion. He can wipe this guy out very quickly. Just trying to follow him. Yep, nice. That means they've all done it. The other one's been killed. The RT's gone. And the game is over. It's a victory. Here's the end of battle stats from the first replay. Yes, this is a two-parter. It's a first-class tanker for Major MTP Cat6 in the Hummel. He managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He did get four exactly, and a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this game. He managed to get 10, and his win eight for the game, 2,864, which is Unicom standard. Now, let's have a look at this scoreboard because it's going to tell us a lot. Yes, he did hit that Nazhorn. Um, I don't think he hit him with the shot where he fired at the tree. I think he actually hit him right at the start of the game. He got 147 hit points because I think that Nashorn was poking out through those bushes and a shell suddenly came in the opposite way. 
Um, he also stunned the T29. I think actually that was one of his own. Um, he did get a shot on the T3485 on the enemy team. And I think that may be one of his blind shots as well. Uh, 131 hit points off that guy. And look, there's a BZ-58 showing here, which, of course, uh, we never saw him fire at a BZ-58. So, um, yes, I think he did get him. In fact, that was the... Oh, it was one of the blind kills, actually, wasn't it? The I think so. It, was, it might have been one of the other tanks that he was firing at on the west side of the map. But he certainly did get damage on that Thunderbolt. In fact, we don't actually see... We can see three stuns, so I think he did stun the Thunderbolt when he was in cover. He also hit him again when he was actually sitting behind that ridge in between the two ships and, ships, and he then hit him again the third time where he actually did finally go down. And uh, he is showing two direct hits on the strip. The actual number he managed to get was 346, and he was only showing 40 hit points when... Um, Major MTP actually hit him the second time round. So he must have hit him for at least 306 hit points with a direct hit. Now, that isn't a penetrating shot. It's just a very high roll. And uh, he, yes, he must have felt that one and thought, felt very, very annoyed. And that's why he went into the town instead, because he thought it was just too dangerous to be outside. Um, yes, the Cromwell, he hit for 77. And the IS, he got for 90. OK, let's have a look at the team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game because that went to the Centurion, who played very well indeed to get a high caliber of 2,901 hit points. Second highest damage in the game turned out to be the Nashorn on the enemy team, 2,243. So he was actually quite dangerous because I think he was sitting up there sniping at our teammates. So that shot that came in from Major MTP probably did put him off a bit because he didn't know when the next shot was going to come in and take him out. The third highest damage in the game turned out to be the AMX-13 F3AM, 2,210 hit points. And of course, he was the guy who actually killed Major MTP in the end of the game uh, because he fired from one end of the battlefield to the other. And there was not a lot that Major MTT could actually do about that because once you're spotted and you're continually spotted by an enemy light tank, it's just a matter of time for the enemy RT eventually gets you. When it came to Major MTP, he managed 1,512 hit points, which means that there were four players on the enemy team who were ahead of him, two on his own team. So he's actually in seventh place when it comes to damage. When it came to kills, though, he's actually in second place because the Centurion managed to get five kills. Major MTP got four kills and three kills went to the IS on the enemy team. And of course, I think the IS was one of the tanks that he killed. Yes, it was one of the tanks that he killed. So he actually killed one of the um, uh, enemy's uh, um, top tanks in that game. In fact, yes, uh, definitely a top tank because he got a lot of damage and a lot of kills. And when it came to uh, base XP, he's a little further down the table in fourth place, uh, beating everyone on the enemy team. The top scorer, T3485, managed 1,025. The Centurion managed 1,012. They were the only two players who managed to get over 1,000 base. In third place, the VK3002M managed 944. And then we've got Major MTP with 770. He fired 18 rounds, which is a good amount of rounds, considering he did die, but he nearly ran out of ammunition. The, the problem with the um, um, the... Hummel is it doesn't carry enough ammo. In fact, actually, he actually did run out of ammo. What am I saying? Because he fired 18 shots and it only carries 18 shots. Uh, it's the same problem with the M12. It only carries 20 rounds. So uh, this is something, this is a good reason for Wargaming to actually increase the number of shells that these RT carry, simply on the basis that during the war, they did actually have um, munition struggles or uh, weapons carriers that would actually carry the extra shells that they needed to fight and uh, you've given they've given a generous amount of shells to some tanks more than they can actually use such as the 2 one 2 a um, arties that never actually existed um, but there are some arties which are really really short on shells and this is one of them i'm afraid uh, the uh, t92 hmc is another the m12 is another um, especially the m12 considering that the s51 carries well 30 rounds so you'd expect it to have exactly the same number of shells as the russian uh, equivalent but it doesn't 
So that, I think that's a bit uh, another reason for us to uh, complain to Wargaming that uh, you're not giving us enough shells to play with. We could easily run out of ammunition. He got four direct hits in the game, zero penetrations, but he did get 11 splash. Damage of 1,512, all of it at more than 300 meters. He did receive one hit. It was a penetrating shot from the enemy SPG. It was a 155 millimeter round, went straight through the side of the vehicle. Seven enemy vehicles were damaged, four were killed, 159 hit points of stun assist off seven stuns. On a premium count, he actually earned 79,980 credits from the game. And he took away 2,310 experience points as well. So a very good game. Pity that he died, but uh, I think the only thing you can do, once you have been spotted like that, and there's an enemy light tank out there and you're trying to get a shot on them, I think it's relocate quickly, get into cover, and try and prevent the enemy spotting where you are so you're not going to be on the receiving end of an artillery shell. But I have to say, that arty player, the MX-13 F3 AM, he was certainly very accurate because he went straight through the side of the vehicle and it was a total wipeout with one shot. Anyway, let's have a look at the second replay today. The second replay is on Prokhorovka, North Spawn, and it's under the command of Waswolf of Quinn. Now you can see that Waswolf is using the stock gun, which is of course the same howitzer you'll find on the gorilla. It's got superb accuracy and it's also got a much better trajectory because it's a kind of short trajectory, uh, but it's very, very accurate and able to get over rocks and buildings and the like. So if there's any enemy tank coming to the center line, they're about to get a nasty surprise because Waswolf's going to make them pay for it. Okay. Lovely. Our first target turns up. It's the Super Chaffee, but he wants a piece of this M2Y. who's making his way up to the railway crossing. He's lined the shell up, rounds out, and, well, he's kind of persuaded that guy not to cross the railway line now because he knows that uh, there's Arty firing at it. And we've got a Jackson there. Rather unusually, he's actually sticking around the cap area. Just looking in to the center line. Looks like the enemy's kind of delayed getting up to the hill. And as a result, they might miss out. Okay, who's he going to hit next? Rounds out. KV-1S. Got a critical hit. The shell landed to the right of him. I think actually it wasn't fully dialed in. When you get fully dialed in, you do get very, very accurate indeed. I've actually been able to put shells directly inside the cockpit of a turreted tank destroyer and do some phenomenal damage to them. 187 off that one, the Yag Panther. He's probably regretting his life's choices there, and he's now picking up stun assist as well. Oh, and there's the kill shot. That came in from the FB. 304, the Bert on our team, has gone over to the east side of the map and he shot from near the ditch. Rounds out on the KV-1S again. And he got some hit points there as well. And he's getting more stun assist. I think our guys are shooting down from the hill and they're enjoying this because these guys... Oh, and the KV-1S goes. Kill shot goes to the AMX M445. Now, it's a tier 7 game with tier 6 tanks in it, so he's bottom tier, but he's getting very accurate shots. And now the M2 wide takes 22 hit points from a splash. Well, this could be very interesting because it looks like the enemy hasn't gone up on top of the hill, or at least only one tank did, and they're out of the game. It's going for the KV-2 now, lines up ahead of target, rounds out, tracked him. He's definitely tracked on one side. Oh, he got the damage assist off that one as well. So he, he really is picking up loads of assistance here. Now, he's tracking this one, but he's lined up now fully. That Jackson is looking towards the center line. Rounds out. He's about to find out that was a bad move. And he's out the game. That was a kill shot. I venture to say that one probably hit the turret smack on and wiped out everyone inside. Very satisfying. This is looking to be a very good game. There are already five tanks up. And uh, it must be noted that Waswolf has one of those. Oh, he looked away, but 
Yep, I've been doing that myself a couple of times, but not deliberately so. Oh, well, on deliberately on one occasion, I looked away where I was looking for a new... T I seen a new target, so I quickly re-aimed because I wasn't fully dialed in, not fully committed. Rounds out. Yep, Black Prince took another hit. 18 hit points on the front. Yes, yeah, so I venture to say you can sometimes, if you see another target within the view range of uh, where you're actually firing at any one moment, you can suddenly change the aim because obviously the other target's more juicy. It's got more potential that it's uh, thinner armor or it's more dangerous to your teammates. Rounds out. Well, he splashed him and he's got the tracking and this guy is taking damage. Oh! Oh! <laughs> That was an easy eight firing a shell in rather late. And he just got the kill, I think. It may have been a 105mm round, actually. So instead of having the 76mm uh, gun, he fired a slow firing 105 and hit the target bang on. There's so few enemies left, and they're all crowded into the corner that Waswell's had to move closer to get a shot. That one wasn't fully dialed in. So he missed the M2Y, but he's reloading. The standard reload for this RT with the stock gun is actually 25.31 seconds. And we can see Waswell's got it down to 20.74. So he has shaved five seconds off the reload time and he's ready to go again. You also get more ammunition because uh, normally, as you saw in the previous game, uh, Major MTP only had 18 rounds. So you get 27 rounds with the stock 15 centimeter howitzer it does less damage but you get more rounds so you get more hits on the enemy and that gives you the potential to get a confederate or a medal that uh, is related to um and also damaging enemy tanks and tracking them and enabling your teammates to get shots rounds out the budgie oh big hit 78 and he's getting stun assist and the budgie goes down <laughs> Now, before he can get another shell out, the Jagdpanther's gone. There's only four enemies left. There's another one gone. These shots are right up against the edge of the map. The enemy is now kind of compressed into this small area of the map. Three enemies remaining. An FSC, um, a T-43, and an M-44. Well, the M-44 just died. Okay, T-43. Can he get a piece of this guy before the game is over? It's going to be over very shortly. I can't see this one carrying on much longer. Our SMV CC56 has got designs on the T43. Rounds out. Oh, we got a piece of him as well. And stun assist. And the game is over and it's a victory. Well, Wastwolf did very well in that game because he picked up an ace tanker in the Hummel. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get, I think it's, is that a 10? Yes, it is a 10. He also got a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by other teammates. And he got a win eight of 1293, which wasn't quite as high as we made your MTPs. He got 2864, much higher but Waswolf did get the ace tanker. And if we look at the team score, we can see uh, exactly how he managed to get it because he didn't get a whole lot of damage. The highest damage in the game turned out to be that SMB CC 56. He got 2,251. The second highest damage was the T43 with 2,221. And the third highest damage in the game turned out to be the SFV uh, on the enemy team who managed 1,915. Whilst Waswolf only picked up 818 actual hit points of damage. So not a huge amount of damage, but it was really about the fact that he was stunning the enemy and his teammates were then hitting the enemy hard and doing severe damage to them. When it came to kills, well, the high scorer was our VK301P. He managed to get four kills in the game. Two kills went to the T78 and to the M8, uh, M4A3E8. And he got a Leather Slayers medal in that game for taking down higher tier tanks than himself. And also the FB304, he got two kills in that game. So he was also having a good time. 
Wasserwolf only got the one kill out of it, but it was a spectacular one because he took down the Jackson. And if we remember, we'll just look at that again. He picked up 289 hit points and he did penetrate the guy. The shell went straight through him. So yes, that 15 centimeter probably came right down on top of the turret and blew him to pieces. So let's have a look at the rest of the detail. Oh, we didn't do uh, XP, um, X, X, XP first. Yes, get XP right. Um, he actually got the second highest XP in the game. The SMV managed 1,175. Waswolf managed 1,038. So they were the only two players to manage to get over 1,000 base in the game, with the third place going to the T78 with 917. He fired 14 rounds. So not as many as, um, as Major MTP managed to get out, but he did get three direct hits and one penetrating shot and 12 splash. Damage of 818 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damaged eight of the enemy, killed one, and did 430 hit points of damage assistance. And here's where he got the ace tanker. It's just these two, actually. 1,891 hit points of stun assist of the 11 stuns. And I think it was the fact that he was firing at tanks that were directly in line of sight of his teammates. And they were then able to follow up and get the stun assist for him. So, uh, yes, it really does help if you pick targets that your teammates can see, because then it slows the enemy tank down, and they get easy shots, and you pick up the assistance. Now, he did earn a profit, 95,315 credits from the game, and he got 30 bonds for a mission achievement, and took away 3,114 experience points altogether. So there you go. Two games, different, RT, different uh, howitzers, same tank, same RT, the Hummel, but you can see there's a big difference between how one actually functions in that you have to get fairly close to the enemy, and the other one, well, it's also uh, capable of going long range, but uh, it can do s severe damage to the enemy. I mean, no small amount. He did 1,512 hit points of damage, Major MTP. Um, more, much more damage than Waswolf did, actual damage. And he got four kills out of it in the game as well by picking off the, the, the tanks which were, uh, or getting some of the tanks, which were badly damaged so he could splash kill them. But he got a high win eight, mainly down to the fact that he was doing actual damage, whereas Waswolf in his game actually was um, was getting damage from stun assist. So he was uh, actually uh, initially damaging these tanks only lightly, but his teammates were then following them up. And of course, he picked up the Confederate because, of course, he wounded tanks, which his teammates then took great delight in tearing them apart, which is what RT is supposed to do. We're supposed to um, help our teammates to actually get those kills by wounding the enemy in such a way as that it makes it much easier for uh, the, our teammates to get the kill. And if we can't actually um, uh, do that, we then try and kill the enemy ourselves if we can. But uh, obviously, uh, lots of people classify RT as a support vehicle. But it's when it act acts like this, where Waswolf actually stunned the enemy and got an easy kill for them. That's where it's really effective because you're enabling your teammates to get really good games um, and the game is over much, much quicker. I hope you enjoyed both of those replays. Uh, they were really good games in different um, with different howitzers, but it worked out really well for both teams in the end. Uh, if you enjoyed both these replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.